We're on a journey across Turkey. We're traveling from extraordinary Istanbul, the historical crossroads between Europe and Asia, across this amazing country and on to the troubled Kurdish region near the border with Iraq. It's a beautiful and exciting young country where Eastern and Western values often clash. Our journey across Turkey will take us through wildly changing landscapes that carry the marks of a rich and often turbulent history. It looks like a very determined and successful attempt really to wipe these villages off the map. Joining me on the journey are Adil Ray and Jenny Kleeman. I've been investigating how criminals are getting rich by stealing Turkey's history. So you're saying there's a known looter living just in that house over there? And I've been discovering that some Turkish Muslims have an unexpected attitude to their faith. I'm with fellow Muslims. I can't believe I'm pig hunting. It's a country facing difficult choices, and the direction it takes could affect us all. Welcome to Turkey. Our journey starts in one of the world's greatest cities. For thousands of years, Istanbul, previously called Constantinople, has guarded the narrow gateway between the Mediterranean and the Black Sea. It's only when you're up here that you really get a sense of the geography of this city. It truly is, like few other world cities, a place where continents collide. Forming a bridge between the cultures of Europe and Asia, it's not hard to see why Istanbul has always been so important. We're now flying over the European side of Istanbul. Just over my left shoulder, just across the other side of the Bosphorus. That's Asia. <laughs> but down below us, we have some of the great landmarks of Istanbul, some of the great landmarks of human civilization. Just down here, this is Hagia Sophia. Over the centuries, Istanbul has been the center of empires, and armies from both the east and the west have fought to capture it. The different cultures have left their mark on this sacred site. It is just the most extraordinary building, not just because of its size, but because of its age. The very notion that they were able to build, to build this more than 1,500 years ago, just, it just defies, defies logic almost. Hagia Sophia was built in the 6th century as a Christian church. 900 years later, it was converted into a mosque by the conquering Ottomans, when Islam became the dominant religion. As a modern country of 70 million Muslims, Turkey's now trying to decide how much it's a Middle Eastern or a Western state. It's applied to join the European Union, although the prospect of a predominantly Muslim country entering Europe is making many in the West uneasy. But Turkish Islam comes in many different forms. To learn more, Adil Ray set off into the woods. I'm in a forest in Mengen, Turkey. I'm with fellow Muslims. I can't believe I'm pig hunting. A wild boar hunt counts as a pretty strange day out for a Muslim like me. Every Sunday, this group of friends meet up to indulge their passion deep in the woods of northern Turkey. 
Most of them, like 99% of Turks, are Muslims. I'm not quite sure what's going on. All I know is what the, what the hunters do is they form a ring around the area where they know there are pigs. I've been told they can smell pig in the air. And if they catch one, they'll kill it, then eat it. In my world, that's about as taboo as it gets. I just, just want to ask him, as a Muslim, does he think if he prays to God, God will help him hunt for pigs? I thought maybe because I'm Muslim and Muslim, maybe it's not it's not in our blood to hunt pigs. As you can hear the dogs are barking, which is a sign that the pigs are really close. <laughs> the action has suddenly just stepped up here. It's a delicate procedure. This is quite exciting, but also scary at the same time. But it looked like today was the boar's lucky day. Turks who eat pork are in a minority. But many, particularly in urban areas like Istanbul, do drink alcohol. My family is also religious, but they are not so conservative. They know that I sometimes drink alcohol, they know that I have a girlfriend, but there's no, they are not so strong about that. The point is, in Islam, the freedom is very important. Free thinking, free mind, this is the most important thing. But some people believe all this is about to change. In 2002, an openly Islamic party, the AKP, came to power, winning democratic elections with a large majority. Some liberals fear they're trying to bring in fundamentalism by the back door. Okay, the process has just started. These posters here, which are all around town, says bring your light. We're not going to leave Moda, which is this area here, or to the reactionists, or basically the conservatives, the anti-progressive people. These protesters have rallied outside a restaurant that's been taken over by the local AKP council. The council has banned alcohol from all its buildings. Arkadaşlar, içki yasağı falan bu tamamen bir bahanedir. Bütün mesele aydınlanma kültürünün temelini oluşturan yaşama sevincine, yaşama kültürüne, uygarlaşma kültürüne karşı olmak. Daha dün, daha dün. Since the AKP came to power, alcohol tax has rocketed. Drinking licenses are suddenly in short supply, and some areas have become almost entirely dry. As a citizen of this area, we are against this. But aren't you free to go and find somewhere else to have a drink? Why I should go somewhere else? This is my place. I was born there. This is one step. Six months after, they will take over in other places, in other places, in other places. We have to say stop somewhere. The protesters paint a pretty alarming picture, but there's not much sign of impending Islamic fundamentalism among drinkers in downtown Istanbul. And the battle over Turkey's future is not as simple as it might seem, as I'd find out later in our journey. The freedoms that so many Turks cherish were enshrined in Turkey's secular constitution. We were in Istanbul on Republic Day, when Turks celebrate both the birth of their nation in 1923 and the life of the man who began it all. Few men can be said to have founded a country. But Kemal Ataturk, whose picture you can see there above the local McDonald's, created the modern Turkish Republic from the ashes of the old Ottoman Empire. And as such, he's still the most revered man in the country. Asli Ozbey is an Ataturk disciple, 
She's part of a political group who call themselves Young Kemalists in honor of their hero. How important was Kemal Ataturk to Turkey, to the creation of Turkey? In many countries, the people rebel to gain their freedoms and rights. But in Turkey, this was done by Ataturk. He made a nation out of all the different communities living here. If he didn't exist, I might have been walking around here in a burqa. Turkish women would have been in the same situation as women in Iran and Iraq. These freedoms exist because Ataturk was determined to create a secular state where Islam and politics are kept firmly apart. But there's a darker side to Ataturk's legacy. Ataturk made the military the guardians of his secular republic. And they still see themselves as defenders of his ideals. The army is still the most powerful institution in Turkey. And it intervened four times since the 1960s to bring down elected governments, they say, in defense of Ataturk's legacy. With a pro-Islamic party, the AKP, now in power, many fear these two sides of Turkey are on a collision course. But it's not only the rise of political Islam that's seen as a threat to Ataturk's principles. Any ideas that might undermine Ataturk's vision for Turkey are treated as dangerous. I went to meet a man who knows this only too well. Oh, hi. Hello. You're welcome. Simon. Hello, nice to meet you. Thank Ragip Zarakalu is a book publisher with a habit of annoying the Turkish authorities. Look at all your... Welcome to underground world. <laughs> <laughs> now, some of the books you've published have got you into uh, huge trouble. Yes, yes, with sometimes... The, with we, the establishment. We had uh, problems. Uh, for example, uh, we were put in trial because of this book. Uh, about uh, the uh, Kurdish uh, resistance. Ataturk said that Turkey was a nation made up of only one people, the Turks. And the authorities still take a very dim view of any discussions about ethnic divisions, particularly when it involves the country's 15 million Kurds. For translating and publishing controversial books, Ragip's been in court 40 times. What do you think the censors and the establishment are scared of then? What why are they why do they feel so threatened by your books these bands are another way of controlling society they think that if minorities are given rights it will cause separatism in turkey i think this is wrong quite the contrary i think getting to know each other allows us to live together better over the years ragip has paid a high price for standing up for free speech including two years in jail and a firebomb attack on his offices by nationalist extremists. Istanbul is the modern face of Turkey, but the majority of this country's population lives in its vast Asian heartland, known as Anatolia. Over there is the bridge across the Bosphorus that links Istanbul with the rest of Turkey. It's time for me to head east. Anatolia has a history of culture and conflict that stretches back thousands of years, long before Turkey was founded. Jenny Kleeman travelled along the Mediterranean coast to investigate a threat to some of the country's spectacular historical treasures. Really to wipe these villages off the map, Joining me on the journey are Adil Ray and Jenny Kleeman. I've been investigating how criminals are getting rich by stealing Turkey's history. So you're saying there's a known looter living just in that house over there? Ooh. Welcome to Turkey.
It's a beautiful and exciting young country where Eastern and Western values often clash. Our journey across Turkey will take us through wildly changing landscapes that carry the marks of a rich and often turbulent history. It looks like a very determined and successful attempt. We're on a journey across Turkey. We're traveling from extraordinary Istanbul, the historical crossroads between Europe and Asia, across this amazing country and on to the troubled Kurdish region near the border with Iran. And I've been discovering that some Turkish Muslims have an unexpected attitude to their faith. I'm with fellow Muslims, I can't believe I'm pig hunting. It's a country facing difficult choices, and the direction it takes could affect us 